Hey, it's me, the cat. In this painfully long project, I'll be ranking every Soulsborne and Sekiro boss from worst to best, according to my expert opinion. But to save myself from some pain, I'll exclude mini-bosses and Chalice Dungeon bosses from Sekiro and Bloodborne respectively. Before we start, I should say that this is all coming from someone that's played all the games a minimum of five times, and in most cases, way more than that. I'm a big fan of the series, and the bosses are a big reason why I keep coming back. But I should also say I'm a gameplay first kind of guy, lore alone doesn't make for a good boss in my mind. But it can help create a stronger atmosphere, which is something I do value a lot. Music and visuals can also make for a better experience. For this one I won't be using a tier list maker, but I do have all the bosses in tiers. There is a tier for bosses that are the worst in the series, awful, bad, mediocre, decent, good, great, amazing and the best in the series. So let's get to it, starting with the tier for the worst in the series. No surprise for anyone, Bed of Chaos remains as the biggest cocksucker in the entire series, and I really hope no one dethrones it after Elden Ring comes out. Since I have so many bosses to rank, I won't go into too much detail about explaining all their mechanics. I'll just give my overall consensus. And with Bed of Chaos, they really shit the bed. I don't like how you can't iframe the hand swipes, I don't like the gimmick of trying to avoid falling into holes that are all around the arena. I've done this boss countless times and I'm yet to have a single second of enjoyment doing it. It is a god awful boss and everyone knows it. This is the only other boss I put in the worst ever tier. Not that the ones close ahead are going to be a massive improvement. But almost anything is still an improvement over this fucking travesty. One thing you might notice over the course of this ranking is that I don't hold NPC invader type bosses in very high regard. So having to fight three of them at once is the last thing I'd ever want besides Pet of Chaos. Not only are their movesets just the player's moves, but even their armor is just copy pasted from Havel, Lucatiel and Alva, who are all existing characters. And there's no apparent lore reason for this. It's not the most frustratingly difficult fight ever, but it is consistently annoying, and I hate it. We've moved up a tier, but really, we're still in the shitter. Since I played the original Demon Souls only once, a long time ago, I'll only take the remake fights into consideration for this list. Not that it matters right now, because I remember Leechmonger being utter garbage back then, and turns out, it is garbage. No matter how high the polygon count is, this boss can kiss my ass. The thing I hate the most about it is how the boss just constantly flails around wildly with shit boxes and leeches flying all over the place, so you can't even see what's going on. On top of that, it can heal itself. What a pain. True King Alant is literally nothing. I might as well be talking about how much I enjoy fighting thin air. This only exists as a storytelling device and I'm not a huge lore buff like I said. So I really get nothing out of this. Except, I guess the soundtrack in the remake is pretty good. But, um, why am I even talking about this boss? Let's move on. I feel Dark Souls 2 had a problem with the whole idea of mini-bosses. Not every scenario where you have a slightly harder than average enemy encounter needs to have a health bar, fog gate and battle music attached to it. But clearly, the team that developed this encounter disagrees. Even if this wasn't an actual boss, it would still be far from enjoyable. It's just a bunch of enemies crammed into a small space and the only cover you've got are some breakable benches. Which to be fair are a helpful addition and it's the only reason why this boss isn't at the very bottom. But it's still very close. It's still very bad. Dark Souls is well known for its amazing and creative boss designs. Just look at Quelag or Gabin Dragon, those look fucking cool. And then you have this. Royal Rat Authority. This is just sad. They couldn't even get it to look like a fucking rat. It's a giant dog with rabies. I feel like they were intending to bring back Sif as a zombie, but then they realized no one would want that, and then they repurposed it as a fucking rat. But the dog rat isn't the actual threat in this fight, it's the little guys that can apply toxic to you. Dealing with the little rats, the toxic and the boss all at once is just overwhelming. But if you manage to kill them before getting poisoned, then the fight is a joke. But not a funny joke, just a cringy Magicat video type joke. I don't want to talk about this shit fight anymore, let's keep going. 
I only see this boss as free souls at this point. I activate him, run back to the fog gate and let him kill himself and get a nice amount of souls early in the game. And really, it's more fun than actually fighting him. All he does is slam down his arms or whatever and let you hit them for a while. And it's very slow, very tedious. I really have nothing good to say about this boss. Just thanks for the souls, I guess. Ava is a pretty decent boss by itself, so if you have two Avas, that would mean it's twice as good, yeah? Well, no. But that must be what Dark Souls 2's dev team thought this whole time. Lud and Zolan is your punishment for getting through Frigid Outskirts, the worst area in FromSoft history. And with there being no bonfire anywhere in the area, all I can think about while fighting these cats is, please don't let me die, I don't want to do this area again. I want to let the preceding areas affect my ranking too much, but when it's literally the only thing that's on my mind when I do the fight, I can't ignore it. And, well, even without the area, this is a terrible gank fight with no thought put into it whatsoever. They're clearly not designed to work as a gank fight, and the devs just <laughs> didn't care. This is like Dark Souls 3's version of Prowling Magus and Congregation, where it has no reason to even be a boss. It's just a pretty dull level with an environmental hazard in the background. You don't fight the Wyvern itself, you just kill the same snacks you've been fighting and continue fighting all throughout Arch Dragon Peak. And those guys are really obnoxious. If it wasn't for this, I'd be excited to come to Arch Dragon Peak since it has Nameless King. But then every time I remember, oh yeah, I gotta do Ancient Wyvern first, and it just tanks that excitement. The age of ancients continues and I just want Gwyn to get over here and fucking end it. I know it's a dragon, but that doesn't mean the fight needs to drag on for so long. I've seen people deploy various complicated tactics on bringing ancient dragon down, but I just stay at the front of it until it breathes fire at me so I can hit its neck a few times. Then eventually he flies up to breathe fire on the ground and that's when I run away. Rinse and repeat about 20 times. I don't find this boss to be particularly annoying or frustrating, I just think it's boring, regardless of what tactic you use. These rats have giant pot dicks, and that's about all I can say that's even remotely positive. You find the rat with the mohawk, you hit him until he dies, and GG. It's not fun, the rats are annoying, the gimmick is uninteresting, and who even cares about fighting rats? Who plays Dark Souls to fight rats? It's Dragon Rider, but there's now two of them, and the other one can shoot with a bow. Isn't that exciting? It totally reinvents the wheel. Only, the wheel was never a wheel, it was a square. And now, instead of one square, it's two squares. So regardless, even if you have two square wheels, the car or whatever is still not gonna move anywhere. That's how I see this boss, it's just two bad bosses instead of one. And it doesn't really matter that there's two of them, because the guy with the bow is so easy. Like, you can kinda just ignore him, and once he does drop down, you just kill him instantly. Who cares about him? Who cares about this boss? I know not many people like this boss, but I don't think many despise it the way I do. But to me, the Headless Ape Gang is everything I don't like in Sekiro. I don't like the amount of repetition with bosses and mini-bosses, and I hate gank fights because the game's combat just isn't built for it. And this boss is a prime example of both. Or should I say, primate example. But yeah, this fight just doesn't really work because usually the idea is to get a death blow by depleting the enemy out of posture, but that requires you to stay aggressive on that one target. And in this fight the apes try to take turns in attacking you, but that goes against the whole combat system. So if you try doing it the way it's intended, I guess, it doesn't work. So, like most people, I usually just resort to spamming firecrackers until the brown ape is dead. This boss is a waste of time. Rejoice, my friends, because we've moved up a tier. We're now in the bad bosses category. Isn't that great? I can't say I despise Volnir, but I do think it's a bad boss. It's very easy, very awkward and sometimes just annoying. I don't like how if you leave the right hand bracelet for last, he just starts hiding it inside this deadly fog. Especially because if you're down there trying to break it and he decides to start crawling forward, you're dead. That's it. Game over. The only thing I like is the reveal, how you're teleported to this pitch dark area and then realize there's a giant skeleton right in front of you. 
For a while I thought the Belfry Gargoyles used the exact same moveset as the Bell Gargoyles from Dark Souls, because the moveset these guys have is so forgettable I couldn't remember it until I replayed the fight. Not only is this creatively bankrupt, but it's just a poorly designed gank fight. While the original Bell Gargoyles were clearly designed to be balanced in a duo fight, these guys just try to bum rush you all at the same time. It's really just up to luck if you can get hits in without getting punished for it. I always just end up spamming heals while trading damage so I can get this out of the way as quickly as possible. Pinwheel has good music and atmosphere, and that's about it. He's really just a soul piñata. I don't know why they thought putting the easiest boss in the game in one of the toughest areas in the game would make sense, but it doesn't. I can't say I hate fighting Pinwheel because it takes about 10 seconds, but it does make it a bad boss. In the original Demon Souls, I liked the atmosphere and the music that accompanied the Adjudicator, but for some reason the remake replaced the music with something that seems more fitting for an action-packed second phase of a Dark Souls 3 boss. Not this. But regardless of how you feel about the music, I don't think anyone can dispute that this boss has nothing to offer in terms of challenge and thrills. I don't think I've ever been hit by this boss, because when he starts an attack, you can do a full lap around him before the hit lands. The weak spot gimmick isn't really bad, but I don't think the joy of fighting out you can damage it is enough to put him any higher. This boss is so bad, it's good. It's like the boss version of the room. How much is it? It'll be $18. Keep, go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. But I love it. Its attempts to kill you are so pathetic that I'm not sure the developers even tried to make it anything but a joke. Maybe it was like an inside joke between the devs. I don't know, but they definitely weren't shooting for the second coming of Artorias with this big piece of shit. This is just a waiting game. You stand still, dodge the few spells the butterfly has, wait until it eventually one day lands and get some hits in, and then repeat if necessary. And if you can't kill it when it first lands, it feels so bad to see that motherfucker fly away. Sure, you can use ranged weapons to kill it, but I mean, who plays Dark Souls with a ranged build? Not me, and this is based on my own experiences. And in my experience, Moonlight Butterfly sucks. Again, with this being the remake version, hot damn does it look good. And that's pretty much it for things I enjoy about this encounter. The fight isn't really a fight until the end where you tickle his chin for a bit, and even that's not really a fight. Though I do like that you have to avoid the breath. Shows just how strong this fucker is when he can kill you by just breathing. But I could have done without the whole sneaking around bit, which is most of the quote-unquote fight. It's at first rather unclear when the boss can see you, and I just don't enjoy the stealth mechanic. It's not my cup of tea. I do understand how it works now, but the learning process with all the one-shots wasn't very fun. I appreciate whenever FromSoft tries something different with their boss fights, but sadly, pretty often the super gimmicky fights end up having terrible replay value. Such is the case for the folding screen monkeys. I rarely even do the boss the way it's intended. I can often just ignore the whole puzzle element and just bum rush them. But even then, it's pretty much just up to luck if I can pull it off. It was okay the first time I did this though. I liked the invisible monkey, that was an actually neat puzzle. But it's just painfully boring on repeat playthroughs. I guess it's kinda cool that this boss pays homage to Tower Knight, except instead of being the coolest looking boss like Tower Knight, this one is by far the nastiest. But you'll quickly forget about the reference when you start to actually fight the boss, which is when it all goes to shit. I feel in some fights the One Reborn is one of the easiest bosses, and in others it's one of the hardest. Most of the difficulty of this boss comes from the passive damage the boss can do, with the rain of body parts and random explosions from the limbs. Both feel shitty when you get hit, especially with the damage they do and the fact that you can get hit by multiple things at once, which can result in one-shots. No thank you. Half-Light can be downright awful if you do the NPC version of this encounter, but it can be less awful if you do it online and fight a real player, but that's wholly dependent on what kind of a player you're fighting. Some of them can be parry guards, some of them can be annoying, some of them can suck, so I can't really rate the PvP fights because they're different every single time. But I do think the odds are pretty damn unfavorable for the boss, with you getting 15 Estus and them getting a couple of painting guardians. 
I think the idea of a player boss is great, but that idea is taken directly from Demon Souls and they didn't really improve on it in any way. So I'd say this is just a big missed opportunity and I hate that I have to go through it right before a good boss. This boss is basically Royal Red Vanguard, but less annoying, and even easier. The fight does suck, but at least there's the neat surprise of the boss turning into a big smurf. The ambiance is kinda cool too, but sadly you don't get to enjoy it for long since the boss has so little health. Which, like with Pinwheel, doesn't make much sense when the area itself is pretty tough, and the boss right after is, in my opinion, the hardest in the main game. This is another boss with cool and creepy atmosphere, and unlike Celestial Emissary, you do get to enjoy it for longer than 30 seconds. In fact, the fight kinda drags if you don't kill both witches in phase 1, and I really don't enjoy phase 2 where both witches start casting a stun spell on you, which is why I always try to find the second witch in phase 1 so that I don't have to deal with that. It's not an insultingly bad boss, but I don't see much to be excited about here. The Giant Lord has some cool scenery around him, but god is he a dull encounter. I can't even think of anything to say about it. There's nothing particularly awful about it, but for a late game boss that requires multiple steps to reach, I would have expected something a little more interesting. <sighs> I'm supposed to be talking about this boss? What can I say? It sucks! It's just the most basic, uninteresting fight that's ever been designed, made worse by the boss having ridiculous amounts of health unless you get yourself some souls of giants. That means fighting Ancient Dragon. Whoopee! Still, I like the placement of Vendrick, how you come across the king just after beating Velstad, in the least kingly place imaginable. I don't really know much about his lore, but I think the atmosphere for the scene is cool. What is not cool is his damage. Asshole. Old Iron King is like a better ceaseless discharge, but it being better means it's only bad instead of being awful like ceaseless. It's still a fight that never gets exciting because of how slow and plain the boss's moveset is, and the experience is made worse by the place you fight him in, having a hole in the floor. I think more people die to that hole than to the boss, because the boss itself is piss easy. I've never actually fallen in the hole myself, but maybe what did happen last time was even more embarrassing. But even though this boss is pretty bad, we're getting close to the next tier, meaning these last few bosses aren't all that terrible. I don't get this boss. It just moves, and you hit it, but I guess it does look cool with the crystals and everything. So there's that. And the music. Oh my god, it sounds like a twisted Christmas song. It just doesn't fit, if you ask me. I think they should have done more with Seath's crystal and maybe make it a part of the fight somehow, instead of it being so easily broken. But regardless, maybe I hate this boss less because every time I reach him I'm just relieved because it means the crystal cave area is done. Unless I die, in which case. <laughs> Fuck me. This boss has a cool idea, having her turn invisible and you having to look for her footprints in the snow to locate her. But it doesn't really go anywhere past that. Just a cool idea for a fight that's otherwise mundane and forgettable. I think almost any regular enemy in Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne or Sekiro has more attacks than her. And no, her being a cute ubu iwi kawaii waifu isn't gonna redeem that. This isn't really a bad boss, but with it being a PvP fight, I can't really place it above actual bosses. Ultimunk is basically Half-Light, but I'm putting it a bit higher since this came first, and I'm sure back then this was really unique. And I actually do kind of find it fun when you enter through the fog gate knowing your opponent is there waiting for you, instead of them just slowly being summoned with you having to listen to some asshole giant talk non-stop. But then again, maybe I'd take that over the terrible run-up to the old monk. I don't know what they were thinking putting these Cthulhu guys that can stun you in the most narrow place imaginable. But the fight itself, again, varies a lot. This time I did actually get to experience some PvP, and it was okay, nothing special. And the NPC? Well, you know how I feel about NPC bosses by now. And we're finishing this video with the most controversial pick thus far, I'm sure. So hopefully, by the time I upload the next part, people will have put their pitchforks away. 
I get why some people have fond memories of Gwyn. The setting, the music, the rich lore all make for what should be an amazing closure to the game. But when it comes to the fight, I think it fucking sucks. His one-handed swings have about three whole frames of startup, so you'll need to have the reaction time of a fucking gunslinger to have a chance at dodging it. And since half of his combos start with the one-handed swing, it really ruins the fight for me. Not only that, but after you take the near unavoidable damage, good luck healing because Quinn is programmed to do a charge attack whenever you try using Estus. If he was a bit less aggressive and had longer startup to the one-handed combos, this boss would be fine. The rest of his moveset is completely okay. But as it is, it is the best out of the bad bosses. Because next time, we'll be going over the mediocre and the decent bosses. Mediocre bosses are basically the meh bosses, so we're not out of the woods yet. Anyway, thanks for being so patient with my slow uploads, and I hope you enjoyed this one. See you next time.